All right, what's happening, y'all? It's your boy Rico from Street Scores, and I know I'm late. I know I'm late, but just had to celebrate my mommy's birthday, so I was with the family all day, and I was not going an entire day without at least putting out one video. Right now, it's 10.30 p.m. We'll see when this comes out. Hopefully, I'm going to try to see if I can beat 12 a.m. I'm going to try. Um, but yeah, man, I appreciate y'all pulling up as always, man. Let's go ahead and get to this video. I'm coming to y'all with a big Washington Commanders update. We have head coach Dan Quinn. He talks about the second overall pick. And a lot of people were doing a lot of like clickbait titles and all kinds of things. And we're going to dive into those titles and how funny they are and how people are really looking into this too deep. I'm more so here to basically clear up any rumors that came from Dan Quinn's quotes also Jeremy Chen I don't know if y'all have noticed if you go to the Washington Commanders official website and you go to their roster Jeremy Chen is listed as an outside linebacker not a safety not a strong safety not they didn't even like invent like star or buffalo nickel or anything like that straight up outside linebacker he's considered a linebacker also the Washington Commanders missed out on a pretty big trade in my personal opinion and more we're gonna dive into all of that of course we got to talk about what jeremy chin being a linebacker means for his projected role and not only that but how does it affect jamin davis is he more replaceable now that jeremy chin is also an outside linebacker like him also i have a really random update on how josh harris continues to outperform dan snyder time and time again and a lot more than that but before we dive into everything make sure you still form that like button still form the subscription button and still form the bell next to that subscription button so you get a notification each and every time i release an informative and opinionated video just like this one make sure you stay tuned and also make sure you go follow me on all the social media sites we got the tiktok the facebook the instagram and y'all know i'm always heavy on on twitter but now we're starting to get all of those other ones going as well so make sure you follow those and stay updated with everything i'm doing on those platforms too really appreciate y'all and stay tuned because we just did the mock draft i'm already cooking up another one where it's going to be completely different because i'm trying to challenge myself not to take the same players not to do the same moves and trades and things like that so been a look out for that I'm keeping y'all updated on every little thing the commander's got going on and then i'm always occasionally do videos like this where it's just like a lot of different random information that i don't feel like necessarily deserves a separate video when i just prefer to take a lot of different things and consolidate it into one video so stay tuned for all of that and let's go ahead and get to this video man let's get it adam adam all right chill out chill out hold on hold on watch out before we dive into everything i gotta make sure i thank my dog quantre for the big time cash app donation again man when people donate and i'm not even live streaming i feel like the least i can do is thank y'all in my upcoming video so man thank you quantre nah i really appreciate you i don't know why you got that as your cash app picture but hey man leave your life man i don't know why you got buddy is that but hey man let's keep it pushing man really appreciate that let's go ahead and get into this video so first up the first misleading headline I saw was from Sports Illustrated. They said the Washington Commanders are taking trade calls in their number two overall pick. That was probably the furthest reach. That was probably like the what? That, I mean, I guess you could take what D Dan Quinn said and then flip it into that. Maybe, I guess. But that was like the biggest reach. Shouts out to Tom Pelissero for tweeting this out. With Caleb Williams widely viewed as the lock to go number one overall in next month's draft, is the phone ringing at number two? Dan Quinn told me yes. But I take it would take a lot to get the commanders to consider moving. That's a better headline. I don't know why Sports Illustrated, just to read it back to you, the Washington Commanders are taking trade calls in their number two overall pick. From that title, it sounds like we're the ones actively pursuing trading back. Not other people calling us. It sounds like we're the ones like, hey, anybody want this number two pick? Do you want this number two pick? How about you? I give you a deal on it because I like you. You want this number two pick? Like, I don't like that headline. That was very... That was very irresponsible of y'all, Sports Illustrated. They almost had the internet in a frenzy type of thing, especially Commander's Land on Twitter. But his exact quote was, yes, I would say it's ringing. And because, like you said, of the talent of the group this year, Quinn said. And so I would anticipate him fielding these calls as it goes through. And usually it's not necessarily later than six or seven. Let's pause there. That's pretty interesting. So basically, the Commanders are... They seem pretty settled with taking quarterback number two overall. 
But if they were to trade back, Dan Quinn is basically saying that don't even think about it outside of the sixth or seventh overall pick because we still want a chance to at least get one of these top quarterbacks. Maybe J.J. McCarthy is like their floor. They feel like maybe six or seven, maybe J.J. McCarthy's still there. Maybe they have another quarterback that they like up their sleeve that they would be willing to take there. Or maybe it's not even a quarterback. Maybe if they're like, if we trade out a number two, we've already accepted we're not taking quarterback then. At least the quarterback that we prefer, there will be quarterbacks available, but maybe not worthy of going that high. So then maybe at that point, they would take like the best tackle available or the best playmaker available, like a Marvin Harrison Jr., a Malik Neighbors, a Brock Bowers. You never know. But I just thought that was, I feel like if anything, that should have been the headline. Dan Quinn basically said that Adam Peters wasn't even listening to people outside of the top six or seven picks. I feel like that's the biggest headline right there rather than reaching and trying to say that we're actively basically trying to look to trade away from the second overall pick but again that's very significant i highly doubt that we trade back but it does make me feel a little bit better to know that even if we were and we missed out on Jaden daniels or drake may which i would prefer to do i prefer to take one of those guys number two overall at the very least we're not going to trade too far back to not at least get one of the which you would consider a generational or at, or at worst elite players at a position that you could argue that we need whether it be tackle or just i mean there's no team in the nfl that when you draft marvin harrison jr they don't make you better i mean maybe it's not your biggest need but there's no team in the nfl that can't draft malik neighbors and not get better afterwards so you really can't miss on any of those guys or even my dog brock bowers my georgia bulldog so you never know so that is a little comforting because again i'm not team trade back at all i want to stay at number two and preferably take Jaden daniels but i'm also very excited about drake man if we get him as well but it is comforting to know that i guess at worst we would trade back to a six or seven remember the giants are six and i'm not sure if they're willing to do business with us but then again i'm not sure if we're willing to do business with them i don't even know why he threw that number out there why would we be willing to trade back with the giants to sixth overall to allow them to get a franchise quarterback that's gonna whoop us twice a year for the next potentially 10 plus years so i highly doubt we do business with them so maybe five or seven maybe three four five or seven and i was working on a video to where that three is interesting because if you think about it if you're one of those people that loves jada daniels or drake may and are very content with either one and you don't necessarily have a preference i love drake may but i do i still have a preference i prefer to take Jaden Daniels number two overall but somebody basically brought up the fact that hey I mean if you like both quarterbacks if Adam Peters likes both quarterbacks and is happy with either one if we trade back to that third pick with the Patriots and in return maybe get like some seconds or some first out of it maybe like some future first or things like that would you consider it I was considering working on a video breakdown like that we'll talk about that later but continuing this quote right here but those people who are usually in the top four or five there's somebody that somebody has targeted and I think it's mostly like, well, I've got to take a shot. A lot of times it's no, like, thanks for calling, but it's a part of the process. And you have to do your due diligence to listen and find out just to make sure, like, is there something that you just couldn't refuse? So he's basically saying, and again, I felt like if anything, this should have been the headline, that the Washington Commanders are really happy with sticking at number two and are really only listening to trade back calls just to make sure somebody isn't giving you a ridiculous draft haul in, in trade value like somebody just giving you the whole draft basically to move back just a couple of picks if it's not that basically adam peters is not listening he's not even considering it and it sounds like no team is probably willing to do that whatever adam peters requirement is for him to move back from number two overall teams are not meeting that whatever he wants is just way higher in value than what teams are possibly willing to give up right now but again they're basically saying that they'll listen to calls they'll they'll answer phones and things like that see what y'all have to offer and if y'all are not meeting this standard we're not coming down to y'all y'all are gonna have to come up to us because again we love the number two overall pick and we have a quarterback in mind more than likely we who knows who exactly who it is right now and even if adam peters has a a guy in mind right now it could change we still have over a month a month and a day really before the draft even happens so so many things could change we have 
pro days coming up in a couple days and things like that so who knows but basically the point is we are happy with sticking with number two that's our preference if you want us to move back from number two you're gonna have to wow us with a ridiculous offer where even though people are gonna look at us a little crazy for not taking quarterback everybody at the end of the day is gonna be like hey man i would have done the same thing with the trade value that they gave you in return they gave you all of them first pretty much their whole 2024 draft second thirds everything hey i would have did it too type of situation and then continuing with the quote i certainly walked past it in the hallway when i was with the cowboys years ago for a trade that involved herschel walker and many draft picks and changed a lot of their organization so i think anybody in personnel with the skills of adam they're gonna listen but there's only so many things that you consider and it better be really good so dan quinn again is reiterating hey man don't even talk to us if it ain't something crazy if it ain't something historical, like if you're not offering something that nobody else has ever offered, maybe like a Ricky Williams trade that the Washington well, Redskins at the time pulled off a long time ago. If it ain't nothing like that, don't even ask. Don't even call us, man. At that point, I was just running up our minutes and clogging up our phone, man. We got time. We, we need to be working on it. We still need to be watching film and evaluating these quarterbacks. And you calling me about some stupid low trade value. Leave us alone, man. And now moving on, the Washington Commanders, if you go to their official website, and of course, we don't even have the unofficial depth chart yet. So this could mean absolutely nothing, but I thought it was interesting that when you go look at their roster update with all of the jersey numbers, and I do want to do a jersey number update video for y'all as well. And we're going to also, of course, this is Rico of Street Scores. We got to dive as deep as we possibly can into every little topic. When we do the jersey number updates, we're going to try to dive into what that potentially means for the player does this project them to play a certain role i know numbers they've gotten they've loosened up on like how strict they were on like certain position groups can only wear certain numbers and things like that but it's still somewhat of a, of a projection of how at least the player feels about themselves and if the team allows it how the team may even feel about that player so i'm gonna also do a big time jersey update for all of the players that we signed or any other jersey changes because players that aren't as notable that are like bench guys they probably had to come up off their numbers to give it to a guy that's a projected starter that we just signed to phrases so i'm gonna give y'all a big time update like that very soon stay tuned for that as well but again if you go look at the commander's official website like their website themselves literally commanders.com and you look at their roster jeremy chin still doesn't technically have a number on their roster but they already assigned him a number i believe he is number 11 i believe but jake Fromm on their roster technically still has number 11th but you're gonna have to come up off of that even as a georgia bulldog fan if jeremy chin wants 11 he gets 11. but most importantly while we're here on top of being six foot three 220 pounds and 26 years old he is listed as an outside linebacker on the roster and i'm not gonna lie this was expected as soon as we signed them but now that adds a little bit more confirmation now i will not 100 believe it until i literally see him playing as an outside linebacker with my own eyes in regular season games but schematically it makes too much sense for him to technically be more of an outside linebacker than say like a safety he's basically going to be a better fit and more athletic version of 2022 and prior version of cameron curl when he was playing more around the box Quan martin is the one that's going to take over the pure strong safety role that cameron curl changed into this most recent season the 2023 season last season and just like Jeremy Chin, I feel like Quan Martin will also be a better fit in a more athletic and explosive version of the role that he's taken over from Cameron Curl. I'm expecting big turnovers from that group, wreaking havoc, completely confusing quarterbacks, sending them in a disarray. They don't know what's going on. Why are there all of these fast, explosive guys running around in the backfield right now? When did this defense get this athletic? This is scary. And then also when you hear outside linebacker, of course, we notice the linebacker we just pinpoint linebacker specifically and even though i do expect joe witt jr to use jeremy chin the same way that they basically used j ron curse the last couple of seasons in dallas but i expect it to basically be that but better so i basically expect him to be like a big nickel again like a star position a buffalo nickel whatever you want to call it 
but still linebacker is in his name typically these guys that have been running the buffalo nickel for us have said like safety or strong safety at worst in their roster depth charts and things like that this is the first time somebody's just been straight up the outside linebacker i guess if you want to consider Khalid hudson taking over that role towards the end of last season that's it though so i immediately thought about jamin davis when i saw that because with frankie louvu and bobby wagner as like your pure off ball linebackers your mike linebackers and then you add jeremy chin to the linebacker group technically because he's an outside linebacker by title where does jamin davis fit in well personally i feel like he's also going to be listed as outside linebacker as well and i feel like he's going to be more so like a will linebacker when in coverage but most importantly i think most of the time he's going to be like an edge rusher on the outside shoulder of like a dorance armstrong jr just like how micah parsons did last year on the outside shoulder of dorance armstrong jr so even though Jeremy Chin and Jamin Davis will more than likely have the same position title, Jeremy Chin, I feel like, will be in coverage far more often, while Jamin Davis will be moving into a Micah Parsons-like role and will be rushing the passer far more often from the edge. So Luvu will still be like a pass rusher as well, but he's going to be coming straight through the middle of the offensive line, like straight through the A-gaps. Jamin Davis on the outside. Jeremy Chen is going to more so be roaming in the secondary, but closer to the line of scrimmage around where the linebackers would do it. And I feel like that's a great idea. I'm really excited to see how this will play out. I think this defense can be elite with those assignments right there. I mean, the athleticism, the fit, the scheme, all of it's very interesting to me and jeremy chin specifically his role as a big time coverage guy will most likely allow him to play in the box and that will help seal up one of the very few weaknesses remaining in this linebacker group i would argue because with jamin luvu and wagner the run stopping should be elite especially on the luvu and wagner side of things but jamin davis has even flashed and shown improvement and development in that part of his game as well and then the rush and the passer should also be elite i like like Frankie Louvu in coverage, Jamin Davis flashes in coverage at times, and Wagner, even at this age, is still pretty solid in coverage. But Jeremy Chin adds elite coverage ability to your linebacker group. Like, if he's really considered a smaller linebacker for this defense, he's easily our best coverage linebacker already today, especially if he's healthy. And all of those coverage snaps where Cameron Curl was locking up tight ends, that will go to Chin. All of those snaps where Jamin Davis was getting beat on a wheel route by a running back, that will more than likely go to Chin as well. Maybe a little bit of Quan Martin there. If he's healthy, he immediately makes this defense better by doing things that nobody else on this roster either can't do or at the very least can't do to the same level as him. He's the chess piece that stops all of the offensive mismatches that offensive coordinators try to take advantage of and allows everybody else on the defense, Frankie Louvu, Jamin Davis, Bobby Wagner, all of those guys to only worry about what they're great at. Because of Jeremy Chin, Bobby Wagner can focus on stopping the run more times than not. Because Jeremy Chin exists, Frankie Louvu is going to be able to focus on stopping the run and going after the quarterback with the occasional coverage. Because of Jeremy Chin, Jamin Davis can now rush the pass some more and with his elite athleticism if we're just looking at pure athleticism Jamin Davis is one of the 10 most athletic linebackers in the NFL without question and I feel like that could be better utilized by sending them after the quarterback making them run forward rather than backpedaling backwards dealing with running backs and things like that so also if he wants to he could probably even slim down a little bit I know he tried to put on all of that extra muscle muscle to kind of like fit into this Mike linebacker run stuffing role trying to deal with running backs coming up the a gap dealing with guards and centers trying to block shed those guys since he's going to be on the edge far more now because again frankie louvu bobby wagner will be in the middle jeremy chen will be roaming around the box and covering whoever you need to jamin davis will probably be able to slim more down towards like the size he was coming out of kentucky probably not that small at all somewhere like in the middle between his kentucky size and the nfl size and then he'll probably be even more explosive coming off of the edge than we even think so again my main point is that jeremy chen being in the on this defense but also specifically in this linebacker group if they use him like that schematically that makes everybody on this defense better especially the other linebackers there with them now moving on we've already talked about the most interesting things so we're about to dive into some really random things and again 
I know a lot of this stuff doesn't really matter, but I just figured if I know it, maybe somebody out there that's watching this video also wants to know it. So just to let you know, a year ago, Dan Snyder's 30,000 square foot estate was on the market for 49 million. Earlier this month, he pulled it and donated it to the American Cancer Society. And basically, he was trying to sell it and then apparently nobody wanted i saw somewhere and then he just decided hey i guess i'll just donate it or whatever so i'm not even gonna spend a lot of time on that there's a whole watch them post article on that but i figured nobody really cared about that i just brought that up because first of all it was something random that i felt like y'all maybe somebody would want to know but i also wanted to bring up the fact that speak of dan, speaking of dan snyder another reason why new owner josh harris is so much better than dan snyder is because ben standig pointed out with the email that he got directly from the commanders he tweeted wasn't getting these kind of emails over the past decade these are happy times and the email said quote and it's personalized too hi ben Please feel free to use any of this information for your own use when writing about these topics. The Washington Commanders are one of the happiest fan bases in the league right now. The Washington Commanders have been busy over the past week acquiring the likes of Bobby Wagner, Austin Eckler, and Marcus Mariota, which has made the Commanders fan base very happy. The ninth happiest in the NFL, in fact. Very interesting. I mean, I feel like that's almost worth a video in itself. The Commanders have had the ninth most positive tweets made about them with their offseason activity, getting over 6,000 positive tweets about the team and their signings the sports geeks have utilized a social listening tool to determine the sentiment of each move in the nfl so far that's really interesting first of all for them to go out of their way to message ben standig to let him know hey man this is very interesting if you want to talk about this write an article on it whatever feel free to do it here's this random information that maybe a lot of people don't necessarily care about but here like josh harris said i'm mean, even if josh harris didn't do it personally he has this organization set up in a way to where there's people assigned for something like that specifically and that's something dan snyder never had and josh harris he hasn't even been here for a full year yet a full 12 months yet and he's already doing things that i i mean he again he's exceeded my expectations because i didn't even think of something like this i didn't even ask for this when he became the owner and he's just going out of his way to go above and beyond every way possible and shouts out to at mofo pod for this because i completely agree he said analytics is big in the fan engagement activities of a franchise it can help monitor what fans are consuming and how positive or negative their reactions are but it can also drive fan specific content creating hyper individual fan experiences and he also noted that nascar is already doing this so this sounds like again josh harris is ahead of the curve because a lot of nfl teams are not doing this maybe we're the only the NFL team is doing this I don't know for sure but I just thought it was really interesting that this is another way that Josh Harris is being very cutting edge he's being another trailblazer this way as well he's doing things that other NFL teams don't do and this is just adds to that list of already I mean it's already several things we're doing that nobody else is doing and now you just add that to it I love it man I mean that's very personalized I mean to just hit up a reporter and be like hey man just in case if you didn't know here's some interesting information that you may want to talk about in your podcast that you may want to do an article for for the athletic which ben standing works for that's really cool man and then lastly before we get up out of here i feel like the washington commanders dropped the ball on this one a little bit now i still feel like adam peters is having at worst an a draft i mean a free agency my fault we, we, you know i'm assuming he's gonna go and have an a draft as well i'm already fixated on saying that i'm ready i'm just assuming going in but free agency wise i feel like at worst it's an a I feel like you can't go lower than an A. I feel like even A minus is like, bro, come on now. The way that we structured these contracts, how we've brought in so many starters and nobody's making any serious money. But I feel like what's stopping us from being an A plus is going to get a guy like Justin Simmons or making a trade like how the Titans just did for cornerback Legereus Sneed. So the Chiefs are finalizing the deal to send franchise cornerback Legereus Sneed to the Titans. The Chiefs are expected to receive a 2025 third round pick in addition to a 2024 seventh round pick flop while Sneed will sign a new contract. And man, that trade I would have done any day of the week, man. 
we still have a lot of cap space again i'm working on a big cap space update video and i'm gonna give y'all some of the top free agents that are still out there that are available at positions that we may still want to upgrade before we get to the draft and things like that we're gonna do a full breakdown and we're even gonna do like a scenario we have this much cap space and of course i'm gonna tell y'all where we rank in cap space in the nfl you'll be surprised by how high we are but we're also gonna do a scenario like okay can we sign this guy and this guy and this guy and still have this much cap space left to, to pay our rookies and to keep some over and take some over even to next season so that we can have a lot of cap space for next year as well we're gonna do a whole dive into that but just know we still have a lot of cap space left and I guess maybe this coaching staff in front office is just very confident in Emmanuel Forbes, Benjamin St. Juice, and Michael Davis because I would have for sure made this trade and paid him whatever money he wanted. Whatever he's asking for, I would have given it to him. And according to Jordan Schultz, after being traded for, again, a 2025 third round pick and a 2024 seventh round pick swap, he's only getting a four year, $76 million deal. I would have given him that. I'm not going to lie. That means he's making a maximum of $19 million a year. But of course, that's the maximum. He's probably going to be somewhat of like an 11, 12, maybe at worst $13 million cap pit per year as far as guarantees go and me personally again i would have given them that that's just me though to get a top tier corner an elite corner in the nfl i like emmanuel forbes's potential especially with this new scheme and the new pass rush that we're going to develop i feel like he can literally be i mean he went higher in the draft than trevon diggs and deron bland i feel like for a reason and with dan quinn and joe with jr here as long as we can get our own micah parsons maybe jamin davis will not be 100 micah parsons but maybe enough percentage of micah parsons to allow emmanuel forbes to play like stefan i mean trevon diggs and deron bland be aggressive get a lot of interceptions picks and things like that i think benjamin st juice will benefit my by the scheme change as well i think michael davis coming here if he can get back to his 2022 self which i feel like he's more of his 2022 self than his 2023 self i feel like 2023 was far more to blame on the the coaching turmoil and just complete train wreck that they were last year for the Chargers, all the way from the top head coach the defensive coordinator everything so i feel like if anything michael davis will play closer to what he was in 2022 out of the way those are potentially three really good corners, but Legereus Need, if we were to trade for him, he would be our best corner immediately. And I would have personally have just went ahead and done that. Again, a 2025, not this upcoming draft, next year's draft, third round pick, and then a seventh round pick swap. And then all you got to do is pay him potentially what I think is going to end up being like a cap hit of like maybe 11 to $13 million a year. I for sure would have done that, but that's me personally. But maybe we're saving our money for a guy like Justin Simmons or one of those other guys that I'm going to talk about when I do my cap space update probably tomorrow. We'll see. But man, even if it was like a, a, a third round pick in this draft, I would have done it. We have six picks in the top 100 of this draft, and we specifically have three third round picks in this upcoming draft so even if it was for a 2024 third round pick i would have done it you we would have still had two third round picks even after trading that away and i highly doubt you can use one of those third round picks to get a guy as good as luxurious need that's a big risk you're taking i mean there's a chance it's not impossible but i would definitely prefer to just go ahead and get luxurious need for a third round pick rather than using that third round pick to try to draft a luxurious need because remember sam howell was traded away for basically a late third rounder you could have basically have traded sam howell for luxurious need value wise if th that would have ended up happening so i think that would have been a home run trade for us uh, trading howell for technically like an elite corner come on dog i would have done that any day but again this is something that wasn't done so i'm not gonna stay on it way too long but i just wanted to dive into why i felt like we did miss that one again i feel like adam peters even after missing out on that trade is still having that worst in a grade of a free agency period but i would have loved to have gotten that one man that would have taken it to an a plus plus for me man you couldn't have told me nothing about adam peters if we made that trade and then paid him that exact amount of money me personally though but yeah, man, that's the end of this video. Please get in the comment section. Let me know how you feel about everything discussed in this video. Please stiff arm that like button. Stiff arm the subscription button and stiff arm the bell next to that subscription button so you get notification each and every time I release an informative and opinionated video just like this one. Man, I really appreciate y'all. Make sure y'all stay tuned. Make sure y'all go check out that mock draft I just did yesterday. I really appreciate y'all. I'm on the way with so much more content. Again, a big cap space update and a lot of the top free agents that are still available and which ones we could afford and we could do some combinations 
extensions and then we can be like okay after signing these couple of guys we still have this much cap space left so it's kind of like why not do it type of thing to improve our team but it is what it is we're gonna dive into that i'm gonna give y'all again a jersey number update for everybody that we brought in or any changes with guys that are already on the roster and then, then we're gonna do like a deep dive into that and try to see what like that means as far as their projected role on defense or offense or whatever so make sure y'all stay tuned for all of that and i really appreciate y'all man make sure you get in the comment section let me know how you feel about every topic that we discussed today dan quinn discussing the second overall pick options we have jeremy chin being listed as an outside linebacker and what that means for our entire defense and jamin davis specifically all of that man and josh harris going out of his way to make the commanders one of the happiest fan bases in the nfl all of that man so i really appreciate y'all i'm gonna catch y'all later i'm out